Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Home Studio Simplified Show. Uh, today we have a very special treat for you. We have a live interview with a gentleman that I met on the Wisdom app. Uh, this is an app that reached out to me and asked me to be a top mentor not too long ago. And they're very new into the sort of podcast realm of things. But unlike normal podcasts where it's just a one-sided conversation, the cool thing about Wisdom is that you can join in and actually join in on a conversation with people live as they're talking about whatever topic it is that they're presenting. And so uh, I listened to some of Gary's talks on uh, finding purpose in life and some of his backstories and everything like that. So I immediately uh, I, I realized that we resonated. And so I reached out to him to have him come on the show today and just kind of talk to you guys sort of from an outside perspective, because a lot of times I bring on mix engineers, mastering engineers, individuals who are very musically minded, which is great. Don't get me wrong. Um, but at the same time, I, I think it's very beneficial for the community's sake to sometimes hear um, an outside voice proclaim something that maybe um, only they could deliver. And so we're going to be doing that today. We're going to have an interview with him uh, here shortly. But before we get into that, you know we have to, we have to give some shout outs where the shout outs are due. So if this is your first time here and you've never been to this channel before this channel exists to simplify the complexities of the home studio and to help you make professional sounding music in a less than professional space the motto around here is that we can dream alone we can even create alone but together we can achieve so much more now let's give a shout out to our chart toppers these are the individuals who have helped to keep the lights blazing and burning so to speak they are the patreon members they are the youtube members they are the giants that are hiding behind the scenes that are keeping this whole thing going so thank you guys so much just for being awesome love each and every one of you every every little bit whether it's a dollar to a hundred dollars every little bit helps it helps to sponsor giveaways it helps to sponsor new courses it helps to just keep things going so i, I greatly appreciate that and by lieu of that let's give a quick shout out to a sponsor of this channel the pro mix academy today's video is sponsored in part by the pro mix academy the Pro Mix Academy offers affordable courses from mentors, world-class engineers, Grammy winners, and multi-platinum selling producers. And with the resources available on the Pro Mix Academy, you can learn how to create radio-ready mixes from the comfort of your own home studio. Most of the courses also offer multi-tracks that you can then add to your portfolio and begin to build out your business. Follow the link in the description of this video to head on over to the Pro Mix Academy today and start learning the skills that are needed to take your hobby or your business to the next level. Okay, so before we get into this, I want to let you know a little bit about Gary. Gary is a husband and a father of four children. He's spent over 35 years in the technology field, and over the past couple of years, he has transitioned to a new area in life where his purpose is to inspire others to live their best life. Gary now shares his experience on various social audio platforms and has been selected to be a top mentor on the new Wisdom app that I spoke of earlier. He's also an author an inspiring filmmaker with a passion for inspiring others and providing a bridge to discover their greatness by sharing a few simple and valuable principles. He now shares his journey on the Ultimate Transition Plan documentary, a podcast that is developed into a book of the same title to be released in early 20 of 22. And if you would like to know how to get a hold of Gary or any way that you can reach out to him to talk, I'm going to be including all applicable links to get a hold of him in the description of this video as well as in the description of the podcast if you're listening through that medium. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce you to none other than Mr. Gary Thompson. Hey, Gary. Hey. Hey, how you doing, Robert? Good. Good to be here. Thanks for having me on as a guest here. This is a, this is a first for me, you know, definitely stepping outside of my comfort zone and uh, met you through wisdom and uh, grateful that you reached out to me to to share with your audience. Um, it's amazing how your life, uh, the journey that you can go on in life when you, when you're working in that creative space. So I just want to, you know, say thank you. I appreciate it. Really do. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day as well to, to come on here and help to, 
to share some insights with my audience. A lot of my audience members are creatives. They're musicians, they're mix engineers, mastering engineers. They work in some sort of a creative aspect. That's what really resonated with me whenever I listened to some of your talks is the fact that um, a lot of the things that you're saying would not only be applicable to business men, to business women, but it would also be applicable to anyone in the creative field because, as I spoke to you just before we started this, a lot of times we deal with imposter syndrome, we deal with depression, we deal with things that a lot of people don't see from the outside looking in. And so I know everyone's story is different. However, uh, what was it that caused that transitional shift in your personal life to pursue your dreams in the way that you're doing now? Well, you know, back in 2018, New Year's Eve, or actually Christmas Eve, I was frustrated. I was stuck. Um, you know, you start looking at your goals for 2019, and and for me, 2018 looked like 2017. And on the outside, you know, if you saw me, you said, hey, you're, you're doing okay, Gary. You know, you got a family, homeowner, you, you know, you have a good job. But I wasn't happy. I was frustrated because at 54, I felt that I should be at a point in my life where I could be in the creative space like most of the people on this channel. You know, I, I have a background in music, uh, filmmaking as a child, even as a young adult, just as a hobby. But it's something I've always wanted to do. And that creative space is just something that's always been with me. So going into 2019, I just dug down deep and figured out what it was going to take for me to really start living the life that I, I choose. And I got some great coaching and mentorship. Um, if I mention a gentleman named Bob Proctor, you probably all have heard of him before. But I actually watched his seminar. It was a free seminar, The Science of Getting Rich. And going through that process, one of the things that I did for the first time ever is I said, I'm really going to step out of the way. I'm going to remove my ego and I'm going to follow this information because my way wasn't working. And nine months later, media company was formed, you know, a new home, uh, the home we were living in. I could barely afford, afford the mortgage, but my life totally changed. So um, that's how it all started. That part right there. I, I made a decision that I wanted to change my life and get back to what really gave me passion, which is being in that creative space. Nice. So we deal with this a lot too in the musical aspect of things um, where, and this is why sort of the channel motto around here is dream, create, achieve. And I always place an emphasis on togetherness together. We yeah. can achieve so much more because and I tell people this all the time, what really got me from point A to point B faster to that point where I felt like I was actually accomplishing something in life is I found me a good mentor. I found me someone that would be willing to invest time and effort into whatever I was doing and also be willing to, at times, be very pointed and tell me exactly what I needed to hear, not just what I wanted to hear. So mm -hmm. from that aspect of, of what you just explained, what do you feel like was maybe the biggest thing that was holding you back from actively pursuing what you wanted out of life up until that point? Well, I had to really look at where I was at in life and what I really wanted to do. You know, 54 years, when you're younger, you think 54, you know, that's forever, right? And before you know it, here I, I'm looking at 54. And, you know, some of the people I grew up with, they're not here anymore. And I had those thoughts, hey, maybe, maybe this is it for you. You know, maybe it's too late, you know, because life, you know, sometimes you go down through life and have different challenges, divorce, job loss, what have you. And you get to a point of just surviving. Um, but I didn't listen to that voice. I said, I want to make a change. And I made a decision to really figure out what I want to do. And I determined, I don't know how much time I have left on this earth, but I'm going to be in that creative space for the rest of my life. And it, and that gave me so much joy and happiness. And that's when it started happening. I made that decision. What do I really want? And once I figured that out, it came down to what type of lifestyle and what it would take to live that lifestyle. And obviously to do that, like you said, you can't do it alone. You have to create a network of people that can help you get there. And I can share on that a little bit further on how you and I connected. You know, I didn't know you a year ago, six months ago, 
And we linked up right away because we're at that same frequency of helping and giving back. And that's that's how part of this all works. You know, it's really not that hard. One of the things that actually uh, I can still remember the talk that you were giving was on gratitude. Oh, yeah. And you were talking about gratitude. And that's the first time I ever like even wanted to jump in on one of those conversations that someone was having on on the wisdom app. And I remember as soon as I heard what you were talking about, I was like, oh, yeah, that's I, I resonate with that because that's actually a topic that I've been covering here recently with my audience. And I feel like everything is sort of intrinsically connected in one way or another anyway. Um, mm-hmm. It's just a matter of trying to connect point A to point B. Um, and then whenever I found you and, and you were giving this talk and I thought, well, I'm going to jump in here and kind of give my little two cents about it, not to take anything away from what you were saying, but only to add to it. I mm-hmm. realized immediately like your demeanor, your attitude and everything that you're, you're trying to, to put out there is essentially the same thing with what I'm trying to do. And is just literally just help people. And we need, yeah. we so desperately need in this hour, more people that are willing to take from themselves to give to others. And um, yeah, that makes me then brings me to another question because um, you talked a little bit about your experience and leading up to this point. um, But are there any key takeaways from that experience that you feel like could benefit those who've joined us today? Creative musicians, creative individuals who are facing this imposter syndrome, who are scared to release their own music because of what it might sound like or who might say what? Is there any key takeaways from your journey that you could kind of sort of nuggets of wisdom that you could give them to say, Hey, here's something that helped me. Well, that leads us right to how we connected, which was gratitude. Mm. Um, one of the things that I know for a fact that I would still be stuck if I did not take that part of the seminar about gratitude very seriously, because to be honest, I was going to skip it because it was a recorded, uh, seminar. And I said, I don't need this gratitude stuff. You know, I'm thankful, you know, I give thanks every day and, you know, I don't, I don't really need this gratitude stuff, but it went deeper than that. And when, um, he talked about a journal, I never, I never journaled in my life. I'm like, what do I need to write? What am I writing for? How is that going to help me create the lifestyle I want? But I said, okay, I'm going to keep my eagle out. And I got, I I did the exercise and it's a very simple exercise and and just kind of like your, your, uh, your home studio simplified, right? Did I get that correct? Simplified. Yes, Yes, sir. I'm looking to simplify my life and the journal and writing gratitude. And this is just kind of my exercise that I do and everyone has their way. Right. Um, but for me, I write 10 things down. Now I don't do it every day anymore because I got a lot going on in my mornings, but it's still there mentally. It's a mental process. Uh, I obviously write things that I'm thankful for, but I also write things in there that I'm speaking into existing, using faith to to allow things to work in my life. And one of the things that I write every time is I'm attractive and attracting creative, upbeat, motivated, financially able people to work with every day. That's something I put in there every day. And guess what's happening? Those people show up in my life because I'm expecting that. And I'm also, uh, I I mentioned I'm attractive. Well, how do I become attractive? I have to continue working on myself to become more and give more. And by giving more, you receive more. And it's a constant cycle. Now, key component to this was part of the exercise was three things that were bothering you. You know, if it's people, situation, what have you, whatever those things are, send love to it. And I had a situation on my job where I didn't want to send love to this person. (laughs) They were giving me a problem every day, but I did. I sent love to the person. And when I went to work, it seemed like they were doing personal development or something as well. But I realized, and maybe they were, but I realized it was me. I was causing the issue with the energy I was putting towards it. You know, I was putting that negative energy and, and, and I always think about, if you don't like what's coming back at you, look at what you're putting out because, you know, we're broadcasting all the time. And so if you're broadcasting negative energy, that happens. And then I sum it up, I ask, I ask God for guidance every day, and then I start my day. And it's amazing. Um, it takes my 
the stress out of my situation. Uh, I'm able to stay in the flow of things that I want to accomplish. And, and since we're speaking of creativity and your artists and everything here, when you relieve yourself of that situation of, hey, is it good enough? You know, will they like it? Just realize that your uniqueness is what makes the difference. You, and for musicians, for example, I played the trumpet as a, as a kid all through high school, had a little R&B group and all that. I believe the horns, the, the trumpets, the uh, saxophone, you can't replicate that with a digital device because when you play that, it's that expression how you attack the note, uh, how you breathe the note. You can hear different artists and you you can say, oh, I know that's that's so-and-so. Oh, yeah, because you know, they're not only their style, but the tone and it's because of their uniqueness. They could play the same song, but it's unique. So your artists that are out there, when you get in that, that flow of gratitude and giving thanks and just say, hey, you know it's going to show up. Just go with it. And I'm on this topic, and this was one of the topics I love the most because this made the biggest change in my life. And, and I'll, I'll, I know we have to move on, but I kind of sum it up with, I did a talk called um, Gratitude Made My Life Fit Like a Puzzle. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have a puzzle, you see the pu puzzle in the store and you say, I want that one. And you take it home and you throw all the pieces on the on the table and they're all over the place. But, you know, if you put all those puzzles pieces together, they're going to form that picture on the box. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So as you're going through that process in life, we have a lot of pieces to the puzzle, you know, and then you're starting to put the puzzle together just like you're you're doing your songwriting and you're putting it together and you can't seem to get those pieces to match. And sometimes you force it, right? You get that piece and you say, it's got to fit. And they're like, guys, it, 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 something's not miss, not there. But gratitude and realizing that, hey, the right things will show up. When you're writing that song, sometimes you need to just step away and just say, guys, you know what? Let's take a break. It'll flow. And for me, when I write music, you start at one place but you end up somewhere else many times, mm -hmm. you know, and some, some of our, as a kid, when we recorded music, we, we played some of the things that were out, but it was a lot easier to create our own music, you know, because it was our uniqueness that we were bringing and we weren't really concerned if people liked it, but we had joy in it and it was just amazing thing. So gratitude was, that was the cement to not only, turn my life around, but to propel me to this whole space of just giving back now, because I already know all the things I'm working for, they're, they're, they're showing up. They're showing up. I mean, here, I'm here on your show, <laughs> you know, Hey, come on. My first live interview. And again, I thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, and that's what, uh, when I heard you giving this talk, that's what really drew me into to chiming in and saying something, because I thought I can actually add something to this because personally myself too, much like you, I noticed there is a dynamic shift that takes place whenever you get out of that place of feeling like the world owes you something versus what can I give back to the world? And so many times, I mean, it's, it's very easy to get caught up in the mindset of, you know, I didn't get this job because so-and-so, you know, they knew somebody else that a little bit better that got it, or I didn't get this gig because so-and-so's best friends with the manager or and we can sit all day long and come up with excuses as to why we didn't get those doors open for us in our lives. Or we can sit back and have the gratitude and go, okay, well, wait a minute. What do I have to offer? What do I have to bring? And nine times out of 10, what I have noticed in my personal life is if you can invite someone into your sphere of influence, like for instance, and I, a lot of people are going to say, here he goes again. Cause I'm a fanboy of Warren Hewitt. He's my favorite online mentor. He's the most genuine person I've ever met in my life in the audio industry. But whenever I brought him on the first time I had no, there was no agenda. I literally just wanted to pick his brain, get to know him better, talk to him and introduce him to my audience because I went in with no agenda and with a mm. heart full of gratitude for all the things that he had already taught me. When I had him on the show the very first time, I, you know, I got to ask those questions that I love to ask and, and love to, to sort of 
pick through that creative process. But in the end of that interview, when all the cameras were off and everything was done and everything was said, and it was just me and him, I always conclude a conversation with, Hey, if there's anything I can do to help you. And a lot of people would think, well, that's kind of conceited. Why would, you know, he's got everything he possibly could need. Why would he need any help from you? Right. It doesn't matter. I just want to let him know that I'm here with anything. And whenever I begin to display that gratitude to various people that I would bring on the show, what I noticed was immediately it's this law of sowing and reaping that imagine yeah. that's been around for years. When you <laughs> begin to sow into someone else, that thought that, Hey, they care enough about me to whether they can offer me anything or not. Tell me that they're here for me. Well, I'm going to be here for them. Right. So because I sowed that into that, that interview, I then reap the reward of having him reach back out and say, Hey, you want to do another interview? Or how about I bring you on the show? How about I make you a mentor? How about I, I'm like, Whoa, what? And all of that stemmed out of the fact of me having no agenda of literally just wanting to help people in my audience by bringing on a, a, a giant in my eyes of mentors to come and help lead them and guide them. And then likewise provide any kind of service that I could to him. One thing that I, and whenever you were given your talk, we actually talked about this. One thing here recently that's been brought to my attention, it was a talk by a well-known billionaire, which he's so well-known that I forgot his name as of right now. Um, <laughs> but he, he was holding this seminar, and he had this group oh, full yeah. of, of individuals who were wanting to be millionaires. That's That was their whole goal in life. We want to be millionaires. I think it was actually, the seminar was called like How to Be a Millionaire in 90 Days or something crazy like that. And he had all of these young kids in here, and he goes, by show of hands, who of you in this room, if I gave you a million dollars, would be incredibly happy? And every hand went up, of course. You know, like whose hand wouldn't go up? You have to be crazy. And he said, okay, but if I gave you a million dollars with the stipulation that tomorrow you could not rise out of bed, you couldn't wake up. This was your last day on earth if you got that million dollars. How many of you, by show of hands, would still want that million dollars, would still be happy with it? Of course, no hand goes up because you're thinking to yourself, that would That's be pointless. It. What would I do right. with a million dollars that I can't do anything with? He then pivoted off of that point and said, now I want you to think about that. If that means that you wouldn't take that million dollars, but you would rather wake up tomorrow, that means that every single day that you wake up in your mind, whether you are thinking it or not, is worth a million dollars to you. So if you can wake up every single morning with the mindset that this day is worth a million dollars, regardless of whatever happens, I would rather have this day right now than a million dollars in my hand. He said that will automatically catapult you into an attitude of gratitude. And then from there, I thought, wow. So what he's literally saying, and this is, I don't know if anyone else has said this, so I can't, I can't uh, claim rights to this saying, but immediately I pin this down, an attitude of gratitude will instantly adjust your latitude based off of your attitude. And it's so true. As soon it as is. you have that gratitude, your latitude <laughs> begins to go places you never thought it would. And so that brings me to the, the next question that I have for you then, Gary, because you've been in that spot where yeah. you were, you know, should I do this? Should I move forward with my dreams? Should I move forward with my passions? to that spot of where now you're trying to help others. So how does one go from being inspired to then inspiring others? How do they get past that hurdle? Well, here we go back to gratitude. I'm not going to re <laughs> rehash it, but in my gratitude, one of the things I write in there too is make others feel important. Yes. So, so everything I do and I realize to accomplish what I want, you got to help enough other people. So everything I do, all my ideas I put together it's all around purpose. How is this going to help someone? Because I'm looking to get to a certain area in my life, you know, uh, filmmaking and so forth. So uh, but that means, OK, I have to help a lot of people along the way to make that happen. You know, and that's just I don't just I just don't go from my career to filmmaking. It's a process. There's various levels in that process. But I think what keeps me in the state of always giving versus getting uh, getting, you know, what am I getting out of it? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you hear that. A lot of time, what's in it for me, you know, um, I've, and, and it was hard to make this adjustment because I, I didn't see how just being in that state of gratitude and giving back was going to create the income. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but 
I'm not in that place of just, I got to get mine. It's more like, how can I achieve my goals through the process of helping other people, you know? And so everything I do the, it is, is being pushed that way and opportunities are, are being, you know, brought before me. And I know when I look back, I mean, come on, nine months, I changed my life totally. I mean, I had my best life ever in 2019. Not that my life was bad, but from a standpoint of just being fulfilled and, and waking up with joy and excitement every day versus like, okay, you know, I got to go make it happen. Right. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I'm just gratitude. Uh, and, and always, and one of the things making others feel important first, I had to think about that, but that's again, one of the things that's in my journal when I write every day, different things, but those are some of the key things. So when I, when I see the garbage man outside and we saw how important that was when we went through this pandemic, it was really <laughs> important, right? Right. Like, you are essential. <laughs> but before that, I would say hi and say, hey, thanks, you know, uh, picking up the garbage, you know, it, it just just thanking, uh, just giving thanks to people, saying hello to people I don't know. Um, and it's just, it just puts you in a great space, even though sometimes you say, Hey, how you doing? And people just look at you like, what's wrong with you? You know, you don't know, but Hey, I just gave it, I gave it freely. And, but what I find is you start attracting like-minded individuals because you're putting that energy out, you know, you're constantly putting, that's why if you see my handle, if you will, right, good thought energy that mm -hmm. keeps me in that space. Cause I'm not perfect. You know, look, you know, I still have that issue. Someone cuts me off, you know, in their car or they honk at me at the light, you know, and the light just turned green. I always got to say, OK, just relax, you know, <laughs> stay in that space. But, hey, it's a constant, you know, you're constantly working on that. So I don't know if that answered your question, but I, I just love that part of, you no, know, it, helping people no, feel I think it really, important. yeah, it's it's basically just like you're saying. I mean, it's that dynamic shift of trying to get past only thinking about yourself. And yeah. here's, here's the other aspect of that. So I want, for those of you who are in the chat, uh, maybe you're a musician, a mix engineer, you're wanting to work in the audio industry or even the film industry in one way or another. Uh, what he's just said here was a nugget of wisdom because he's literally letting you know how to get farther ahead than your other peers without stepping on people, without creating enemies. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And the way that you can do that is, as he's already stated, um, and I'll just sort of reiterate and reword, but literally build a, a network of individuals, like-minded individuals that you try your best to help with and don't worry about getting anything in return. That's where the dynamic shift comes in. Whenever I quit worrying about, um, well, if I do this, if I create this course, if I give away and I still get people that reach out to me and like, dude, you're giving away way too much on your live streams. You're giving away all your courses. You're giving away all your wisdom. You're giving away. I can't help it. It's just, it's innate in me. And I've realized over time, it's been, it's almost like a muscle that you have to work out uh, because humanity in and of itself, the, the proclivity of humanity is whenever we have knowledge or something that gets us ahead in life, we want to harness it and hold on to it. Or if we do get rid of it, it's let's sell it. Let's make money off of it. And Although there are aspects of that where that does make sense, especially if you want people who uh, want to pay for your time for mentorship, that's definitely a great way to get, get that monetized. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with money. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. It's not money itself. It's whether the money has you or whether you have the money. But from everything that he's been saying here and what I'd just like to reiterate is surround yourself with like-minded people that have your best interests at heart and do your dead level best to help them. And in the process, what you're going to find, and I've seen this time and time again, everybody that I have ever given anything to, everybody that I have ever helped or tried to like went above and beyond to help them without expecting anything in return in one way, shape or form, it always circles back around and comes yeah. back to you in some way. I couldn't tell you how many clients have reached out to me for mixing or for mastering, or they've wanted a, a private consultation because they said, Hey, so-and-so that was on your stream that you gave them a free course told me about your stuff. And now I'm paying for your products. So whether or not I sold a course to that individual or not, I still sold a service later on down the line. So what you'll find is over time, when you begin to work this muscle, that's not 
innate. When you begin to work that muscle that says, I need to put myself aside, say, you know, he said it so beautifully here, Gary did, about, you know, sacrificing your ego from time to time and just saying, no, it's not about me. You're going to find that it's going to, it's going to help you so much. And so Gary, man, this has been awesome already, but I have to ask, and this is sort of a, sort of a, a slighted question, but I think you can, I think you'll be able to answer this very well, but what advice would you give yourself 10 years ago if you had the opportunity? Like if you were talking to yourself 10 years ago, what would you give 10 year younger Gary? What kind of advice would you give him? You guys are going to say, come on, man, you, you're <laughs> saying the same thing, right? <laughs> Gratitude. Gratitude. <laughs> Gratitude. I mean, that, that was it. I mean, it, and I know for some of the speakers, like, man, what is this guy talking about? How can it help? Try it. I'm telling you. I tried it at 54. I was broke, frustrated, not fulfilled. Sure, I was thankful for my life. That little piece of gratitude. And, and I'm going to give you an example of what just happened to me last night. Now, with my podcast, I, I just said I'm going to give it freely, give it out freely because I received the information. Because the seminar I received, no one said, hey, Gary, take a look at this, right? Um, I watched it, got something out of it. And because of the pandemic, I had to put the energy somewhere. So I started the podcast to document my journey. And then I had people say, you know, you should monetize it. And I said, no, I don't want to monetize. I want to give it freely as a gift the way I received it. And I said, they'll come away to monetize it, you know, without changing the message. So mm, that led good. me to, to wisdom, the wisdom they found me. I and, and I'd only podcasted for maybe not even a year. So I believe the content was so raw and true, they felt the heartbeat of the speaker. You know, I, I wasn't trying to be anyone else. I'm just saying, hey, look, this is what I did. I'm not a guru. It's I'm not. I just followed some principles and I was disciplined and I did it every day. And um, the, the top wisdom and everything. And that, remember, I was telling you about the I'm attractive to people. Right. And I'm attracting and attractive. Mm hmm. I get a guy that I went to school. I was telling you this before we spoke today. He's been in filmmaking for years. And see, I don't even worry about how I'm going to get to the filmmaking part because the people are showing up. I say things, hey, hey, when you're ready, let me know. Uh, I got this just when you're ready. And everything's timing. So writing a book, I didn't realize that that's only 5% of getting your book out. It's 95% is marketing. So I said, well, I want to get into filmmaking. I'm going to do a trailer. Well, he said, hey, I've been in filmmaking. I'll help you. I'll help you do a trailer. And I saw some of his, his, his uh, things he's done. But I haven't talked to him in probably 30 years since high school. I think I've run into him maybe one or two times. But he's been in that on the side besides his career, been doing that. And now he's retired. And he said, oh, yeah, I do this for, for people. It helps me get out there. But again, for you, the musicians, the recording artists, all the people here, that's when things show up. Someone will call you and say, hey, we're looking for we're looking for a new band. We're looking for a new group. We're looking for a new sound. We want a different spin on production. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen your your information. We like to talk to you, you know, because you're just bringing your uniqueness and there's a market for it. You know, it, there's a market for what you do. And when you press and you get frustrated and they say this in sports all the time, you know, they're in the zone. Well, they're just flowing freely. But when you're all stressed and trying to make it happen, you're all tense, that energy and people feel that they're like, whoa, it's just something not right there, you know. But when you just and, and it's not one of those things where you're like, I'm just giving, giving, giving so people will like me. No, it's like, OK, if we're writing this song, what's the purpose of this song? Do we want to make people happy? want to reflect on a situation and say, this is what I want my audience to, to see. And you put it out there freely because when you start doubting it and I'm speaking to myself, this whole wisdom app, I said, you know, there's people on here that have 20, 30 years experience. They do this for a living. I said, I'm just going to tell my story. That's the best thing I can do is tell my story. As a songwriter, you write your music. You know, I, I mentioned as a child, we, we played a few of the, the hits, whatever, but we had more joy 
figure it out and recording our own stuff. And, and best of all, no one could critique it <laughs> because it was our original. Exactly. You know, so, but going back 10 years, gratitude, man. I, <laughs> that's it. Because I got in my way a lot. I'm sure. Well, I, I know I did because I figured I had to make it happen and not realizing there's other things that can help move things along faster. So gratitude. The show's going to be the gratitude show, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so to, uh, to sort of spin off of that, so as soon as you said what you said a minute ago, it immediately uh, re- rekindled a quote uh, by Louis Pasteur. And he's the late, for those of you who may not know, he's the late French microbiologist, chemist, pioneer of germ theory of disease, and the inventor of the pasteurization process. He was actually noted as saying, chance favors only the prepared mind. Now, what did he mean by that? Well, after everything that you've heard today, literally what he was saying was your success rate will improve if you mentally focus on the task at hand and prepare to be enlightened by others along the way. The more prepared or knowledgeable that you are, the more likely you will be able to make the most of the chance and the opportunities and the observations that are given to you at any given time. So as you begin to grow uh, in the knowledge of, you know, music and, and all of that thing and all of the things that come around that mixing, mastering, and you begin to build this network, the more that you begin to prepare yourself for the time when those doors do open, the more the doors will open. It doesn't, it doesn't make yeah. sense. It really doesn't. I know. But I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the same time, uh, when it starts to happen, you start looking at yourself and you're going, what in the world is happening? For instance, he's already mentioned it, um, but we met on the Wisdom app. Wisdom reached out to me. I had a podcast. Well, I've had a podcast now for years. I'm going on episode 66. I believe this will be episode 66 or even 67. I'm, I think I've lost count. Um, but whenever this goes live, this has been an ongoing thing for me for quite some time. They had no clue uh, whether or not I would be a good fit until they went and listened to whatever I I was putting out. And um, immediately they reached out and said, Hey, we want to invite you on as a top mentor. And I was like, wow, I've okay. Hmm. Um, In the process of that, because I'd been already putting the groundwork for years, doing my, doing this, you know, pursuing my passion that's what opened that door when the door was available. It wasn't because I reached out to them. So with a lot of the things that's happened in my personal life, professionally, uh, business, like, um, anything that has to do with getting ahead farther, it's been because I've just been doing what I love, doing it with passion, doing it with gratitude and always keeping myself open and preparing myself or whatever might come next. And you might think, well, how do I do that if I don't know what's coming next? Just do what you love to do. Yeah. And do it with all of your fervor. Do it with all of your might. And make sure that whatever you're putting out is the best version of you that you possibly can. And whenever the doors go to go to swing open, you're going to already be prepared. You're going to already be ready because you've you've been conditioning yourself along the way. It's sort of like a fighter you know, whenever they go in, into a fight, uh, a boxing match of some kind, they don't just immediately sign up, like wake up one day and like, Hey, I'm a boxer. I'm going to jump in the ring with Muhammad Ali. No, that, that don't take place. You have to condition yourself to get up to speed, to even j- step in that ring for the first time. It's just like you with your music. It's like you with releasing things for the world to hear. And I, I even shared this with the rocket fuel bundle members, uh, before this call, we had the rocket fuel bundle, Uh, membership meeting. And I was telling them, you know, it's not easy, but the more that you do, the easier it gets. And the greatest teacher is repetition and making mistakes. The more that you do a thing, the better you get at it. The more mistakes you make, the more ways that you find to navigate around those mistakes and how to help yourself out of those binds that you might get in. And what happens then is later, what happens is you run into a mistake And you're like, oh, I know how to navigate through that. Then you find someone else who has a similar mistake and you're going, hey, hold on. I actually know how to help you out of that. Now, suddenly you become, like I said earlier, that one who went from being inspired to inspiring others. 
it's crazy how this whole cyclical cycle of lawing, uh, uh, sowing and reaping and, and just, it, it's a, it's a God thing. It really is for people to say oh, that, yeah. that oh, he's yeah. not in charge, oh, yeah. intricately in charge of, he oh, is yeah. the divine orchestra. I mean, he's, he <laughs> is the divine. Yeah. Yeah. So Gary, yeah, I wanted, you, to, I wanted to say one thing before we move on. Um, yeah, sure. With the artists out there. And this is something that I just really, really believe probably over the last year, because you start evolving, right? But you are unique. And I know you hear that, you know, oh, you're unique. You hear it as, as a kid. Oh, you're neat. You're unique. You're special. No, you are. The way you write your music, the way you, rec- the way you, attack the keys, the way you strum the, your guitar, we're unique. And once you really get there and say, hey, you know what? I'm just creating. And there is an audience for what I have to share. Mm-hmm. I mean, you that's why we have so many different recording artists and different styles. You probably have so many different um, areas of music. And once I realized that I'm unique. No, no one can. When I when I was writing my book, I said if it wasn't for uh, spell check, <laughs> Grammarly, I'd be in trouble. You know, right. I wasn't the greatest <laughs> writer in high school, but I said, you know, we you can fix all that stuff, but um, no one can tell my the, the story the way I can. No one, because my story is unique. Your story is unique. No one can tell you how many what it took for you to get your first instrument. You know, maybe you had a, you went to the, to the Salvation Army and got a broken bass guitar and you, you, you got the money to, to put it together. And then you, you, you put your money to buy a, a bass. It wasn't the bass, best bass, but you started. And then over time you said, okay, I'm really going to pursue this. And then you started getting better equipment, but I really embraced the journey now before I just wanted to get to the place. I, you know, people say, enjoy the journey. No, I, don't, I want to get to the place. <laughs> uh, but the journey allows you to give back. You know, if you anybody just I wrote a song. It was a hit record. And, you know, you hear the one hit wonders, right? Uh, they just and but when you go through that process, you can replicate it. And not only can you replicate it, you can share with others. And that's that's even that even goes beyond that, because. When you help someone else succeed, I mean, it's just a, it's a beautiful thing. And it, it comes back to you. It may not, and it's not like, oh, I'm doing this to, 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 to make me feel good. But, but let's just go back. When you give someone a gift, it's their birthday. Uh, you give someone a gift and they go, oh man, I didn't even know. Oh, thanks. Don't you feel good when you do that? So now I get this whole journey thing. You know how why people become coaches because you you want to give back. I mean the, the the things you do, Robert. I mean I just I just met you and I've been looking at some of your your videos and things like that and and uh, I can learn a lot from you. You know I, I want to be in this space of producing, but you can't do it all. Sometimes you have to hire out, right? But this has always been a passion. If you saw my office, it looks like a little studio. You know it's. Uh, it doesn't have all the things. Yeah, I got a few little glow <laughs> lights. Yeah, a few glow lights. I got have my mic here, but you know, it's it's fun. You know, it's creative, and and I know for you, it's, it doesn't feel like work. And just like your your listeners here, when you when you pull out that instrument, and you and you're getting that creative state. Sometimes you lose track of time. So, but uh, yeah, just wanted to throw that out there, Robert. Nice, nice. So, Carrie, let me ask you, what is your next step? What's your next step in your journey to empower others to see their own greatness? Well, um, through the book, it turned into a coaching program uh, that I wasn't anticipating. It it just turned into that by really looking at it uh, as a way to not only help the individual reading it, but help communities. Because I feel putting the way I put the book together, it's going to help you or help a person realize what they really want. And once you know what that is, and it's not, you know, I'm not going to say it's going to happen overnight, but at least you know, okay, this is what I really want to do. I really want to be in filmmaking or, or be an artist, a chef, whatever it is. And 
a lot of people need help beyond that book. And I didn't want the book just to be, oh, well, that's that's a nice book here. It's great. No, I want to be able to take those that when they get to the end, it's like, well, I need a little help with this. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I get what you're saying, but I need a little help and be able to create that parallel path for them to still have their career, but see themselves transitioning to what they really love to do. And so now they're excited when they wake up every day. It's not just like, oh man, it's Monday or it's Friday, man, <laughs> living for the weekend, right? It's like, it's Monday, but my job, and I'm speaking this from my own experience, my job is fueling my my creativity to do other things I want. So they're my investor. My job is my investor into my dreams, my goals. And so going from that and ultimately uh, the filmmaking, and I have some, um, some I guess, ideas I want to share with people that I feel that are, well, they are new because no one's done it like me. Remember I said the uniqueness? Mm-hmm. But it's all to give back to humanity to say, you know what? I, I can live my best life too. And I wrote the book in a in a in a fashion at least my my method behind it was i'm still in in the midst of going for my my greatness i'm not there it's not coming from someone that's made it already no i'm still there with you i I still have a job you know i'm still working on my my side hustle if you will but you can within that give some simple principles to say hey it's really simple what he's doing he's not making it complicated. And again, your show, <laughs> Home Studio Simplified. That's, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated to make change and growth. So ultimately, the big screen and, and continue just sharing stories to help people, inspire them to let them know that it's not too late. It's not too late for them. That's awesome to hear that the the book is wrote from that kind of a perspective. I love to hear that because so many times we see people on social media or You know, we get these videos in our news feed of individuals who are stepping out of Lamborghinis and they're, you can be (laughs) like me too in 30 days, just buy my $14,000 course. And I'm like, well, no wonder that's how you got the Lamborghini. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And and the audience, I've I've always wanted to build an organic audience so they they can go on the journey with me because the people on the podcast, I didn't put it on social because I'm not really, I just got on Instagram because of wisdom. Um, I had a Facebook, I think my picture was 14 years old or something. I never really posted maybe happy birthday or something, but I wanted to, with the podcast, I wanted people to attract, be attracted to it based on what they're looking for. If they're saying how to get unstuck or whatever keyword they use, I didn't do hashtags or anything, but people were finding it. And then I saw there was an audience globally. Now I did put that in there that I wanted to share my information worldwide. I didn't know in about two weeks that I was going to have an audience in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, China. I said, whoa, I better take this a little seriously because some people were downloading it as soon as I put it up. Wow. And so um, I said, okay, because at first it was like, who's going to listen to me? Well, there's a market for what I'm doing. So I'm building an organic audience there. The book will be an organic audience. And as we go, people can say, I followed this guy and he's here now. I can do the same thing because I remember his first podcast when the audio didn't sound that great, uh, but he had a message. And then, you know, he 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 did this on his show and then he wrote the book. Well, hey, heck, if he could do it, I can do it, too. And the whole thing is just start now. There's no perfect time. People right. are like, well. Um, maybe once the kids graduate, when I get this new job or I get a little more money or it's always, I'm gonna, right. (laughs) You know, no, just, just do it now. Just start just write down what you want. That's, that's how you can start. Amen to that. Yeah. So Gary, I have a couple of curveball questions. Uh Oh, that's right. These are, (laughs) Taking He's in the hot seat. He's live. We've got curveball questions coming. So I, I actually ask these questions to everyone who comes on the show. You're a creative individual, so I know that this, this is not really going to be a curveball for you. But, Gary, what is your favorite color? Purple. Gary, what does purple smell like? Purple. <laughs> 
Oh, that's a good one. That's a purple <laughs> spell. I never been asked that one before. Um, I guess it. It smells like I don't know. Pete, I don't know. What does it smell like? <laughs> That was a good one, man. You didn't warn me about that one. That's why I didn't uh, do I, it. I, I thought I had you. That's all oh, purple. That's nothing. What does it smell like? I have to use that one. I'm taking a note. I'm going to borrow that one. <laughs> so has anyone ever answered that question? Yes, everyone has answered the question. What it smells like? Well, I usually will. I'll ask the first question is, what's your favorite color? And then I always ask them either, what does it smell like or what does it taste like? Oh, it tastes like tastes like grapes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just a great way to to sort of uh, end on a good note and and uh, get a laugh out of individuals and also help to work that creative those creative juices. I love the fact too that whenever I, I ask a creative person this question, um, they get very like, "Wow, oh, they got to get ready." <laughs> yeah, I never I never thought about that. And then they start like the the most beautiful one I had not too long ago. Um, and the reason, another another cool thing about this is creative people will always find an answer one way or another. And analytical people will sort of just shut it down. They'll be like, no, it don't have a smell. It don't have a taste. It's a color. Uh, but that's what I love about creative people. We always find a way around whatever it is that we're facing, whatever it is that we're navigating. Our creativity will find a way around it. And that's why I feel like businesses, if you're listening, factories, CEOs, if you're listening, hire creative people. They will find ways around your problems for you because they're creative. Analytical people will give you the numbers that you need. They'll give you the stats, but creative people will be the first individuals to come up with solutions instead of just putting a bandaid on a head wound. So Gary, thank you so much for coming on again. I appreciate your energy. I appreciate you coming on here. Hot seat. (laughs) (laughs) I hope everyone in the chat has has got something out of today's uh, discussion as well. This will be in audio form too. If you'd like to go back and and recheck this out on the podcast, it'll be uploaded here momentarily. Uh, Like I've already stated before, if you want to know more about Gary, if you want to know more about what he's doing, where he's at, uh, sort of spy on his space, I've got all of those links in the description of this video right now. You can go and check them out right now if you'd like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and continue on past this interview uh, into a little bit of a live stream Q&A. For, I seen that I had some questions in here that were more related to Cakewalk, so I will take those before we end it today. But I'm going to go ahead and let him go now. Um, so, Gary, once again, thank you so much for being on, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing what else you're, you're putting out and, and trying to help to be uh, someone to help prop you up as well. Well, I appreciate it. I really do. I really do. My, my, my wife is calling me during my interview. Perfect timing. <laughs> Perfect timing. There All we right. go. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks a lot, man. You I have appreciate a good day, it. brother. Thank you. All, All right. right. Have Bye-bye. a good one, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. So that was our interview with Gary Thompson. I know this was sort of an impromptu interview. And um, one of the things is um, you'll notice around here is there are some things that are very planned and they're very, you know, by the book we do them all the time and then there's other things like today that's just very impromptu so that's why it is so imperative that you subscribe that's why it is so imperative that you um you know click that bell notification if you haven't already that's why it's also very imperative that you uh become an active member here in the community because there's going to be from time to time there's things like this that i'm just going to spring on you um so with that being said I'm going to go ahead and answer some questions here that were in the chat earlier. Uh, Let me make sure I can go back and get them. And if you have any questions now, too, uh, for me, it doesn't have to even be about audio at all. Uh, You can go ahead and begin to share that as well. So Doughboy, I don't know if he's still in the chat or not, but he actually had a question about, he said, I want to change the skin of Cakewalk. How do I do that? Can I just download a new skin or do I have to use the theme editor? That's a great question. So let me take you to the desktop here. Let me show you what kind of options you have. Um, in fact, let me go ahead and put that uh, question up on the screen for everyone to, to hear it as well. And let me figure out, where's it at? do 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 do
Um, let's see here. Alert box. New subs. Oh, so apparently I deleted it. That's not cool. Yeah, it looks like I deleted the... Um, I might be able to fix that. Hold on. Let's call this YouTube chat. Okay. Make that a browser source down here. You guys are seeing the raw work here firsthand. And then I'm going to make this the browser source will be. Okay. You know what? I'll do that later. I don't necessarily have to put it up on the screen right now anyway. Um, we'll fix that later. No big deal. So let me show you um, the question that he had was he wants to be able to change the skin. So if you come up in here to the views menu, or actually it would be the edit menu. Sorry. Come up here to the edit menu. I'm trying to zoom in and it's not working. There we go. Come up here to the edit menu and preferences, which my, now my mug's in the way. <laughs> I'm going to get my mug out of the way, y'all. Okay, views menu. Come down here to preferences, edit menu, preferences. You'll see in here, uh, da -da -da -da, customization. It's right here. And then you have display and you have something here called themes. So this is where you can change the skin. You can change it to, uh, there's two of them that are stock that are built in. There's the mercury theme, the tungsten theme. And then this one here is my HSS theme, the one that you currently see. And then I have another theme, uh, that's called the sheen theme for HSS here, but that is essentially that changes the entire look and feel, so to speak, of the DAW. And it's cool because with the theme editor, I was able to add the little channel motto right here, dream, create, achieve, and able to just sort of work things in here a little bit differently from what they would normally be. So great question, but that's how you change that. Um, I do have the theme available if you're a YouTube member uh, from the memberships tab that's on the channel or you're a Patreon member, you'll have access to those. And I believe at any tier. So that's a dollar a month. You'll have access to that as well. So great question though. All right, let's see if I missed anything else. Do, 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 do. Oh, it looked like uh, DJ Big Red 81 was answering some questions for me. I appreciate that, buddy. Da, 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 da. Okay, I don't think I really missed any other. Yeah, I don't think I missed any other questions. I'm biased because this channel deals with Cakewalk, but really any inspiring producer can benefit in my opinion. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that, Jeremiah. Uh, Tiger says, last time I won a feature song, how it works, I sent audio in an email. That's a good point. Um, but um, bum bum. So, um, let me just go ahead and I might even be able to pull that up right now. We can feature that song today if you'd like. But da da, just gotta find. Yeah, da da da. So that's the. While I'm doing that, trying to find that uh, email though, uh, one thing that I would make mention of is we do still have the, there we go. We do still have the um, monthly song contest going on. So if you did not know about that, that happens every single month. We have a monthly song contest where individuals get together and um, we just, Okay. 
I'm trying to find it here in the, but anyway, <laughs> the individuals get together and then we all then listen to the song together. And from there, uh, we will then give a professional mix critique of that and the winner will get chosen. Uh, they will get a free mix and master from yours truly. And we usually do that mix and master live during one of these live streams. So, and it looks like, it looks like I did find it. Let's see if it'll play. Yep, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and feature Tiger's song on today's live stream. Why not? This is what I was talking about, about being flexible and, and fly by the seat of your pants. Um, let's go ahead and listen to this song here. Thank you so much, Bluck Hunter. I'll turn that off while we're listening to this song. Nice. यही है मेरा भी घर इनकी सेहत से जोड़े मैंने कुत्ते हैं पाले बनते ये फेक गैंगस्टर एआर पिस्टल वाले बड़े हैं कांडी बनते हम जैसे सुपर वाले फूटेंगे अब बैठाके बनेगी रोज दिवाले मैंने सांप नहीं पाले मैंने कमाई है दोस्ती तू जितना कमाता महीने का उतनी कमाई है रोज की मुझसे जो भिड़ेगा तू तेरी तेरी है नो स्ट्रेल तुझ में अहमत कर आजा जी एसपी हूँ मैं बॉज के मुंह पे ये दी है वार्निंग तुझे मैं जड़ से उखाडूंगा खोलेगा मुंह जो ज़्यादा बेटा मैं बीच से वारूंगा बेटा मैं बेटूंगा काम और घसी टूंगा ज़्यादा तेरी मारुति को तोड़ के आठ सौ तेरे पीछे मैं डालूंगा लड़के ही मचाते तो भाई हैं, लड़के ही माचिल के, मचाते तो भाई हैं, मचाते तो भाई हैं, मचाते तो भाई हैं, लड़के ही माचिल के, मचाते तो भाई हैं, मचाते तो भाई 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 हैं। हमसे बिरना ना तुम, यहाँ पे मिलती ना माफी है, कहते हैं हमें पहाड़ी, बस ना हमें काफी है। ऐसी जगह ही माचल यहाँ हर घर में फौजी है यहाँ चलाते नहीं गांस यहाँ चलाते हम डाटी है लड़के ही माचल के मचाते तो भाई है मचाते तो भाई है मचाते तो भाई है लड़के ही माचल के मचाते तो भाई है मचाते तो भाई है मचाते तो भाई है लड़के ही माचल के मचाते तो भाई है मचाते तो भाई है मचाते तो भाई है लड़के ही माचल के मचाते तो भाई है मचाते तो बाही 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 है। Nice. Good deal. Okay, that scared that scared me half to death. Was <laughs> not expecting that. Very cool. Very cool. So yeah, that was our song feature. Uh, he won that on a live stream not too long ago. Uh, whenever we spun the wheel of awesomeness. And uh, so yeah, hope you all liked it. Looks like we're getting a lot of thumbs up and okays in the chat. So good deal. Good job, man. Sounded great. So Barry Fitzgerald had a question. Is it better to be a member here on the YouTube channel or a Patreon member? It's actually better to be a Patreon member uh, because there's just so much more that's there. You can still be a member here and get access to the theme and to the uh, a couple of other goodies, um, but really the majority of where I'm sort of placing the biggest emphasis on is on Patreon because, uh, and I, I understand, you know, you have to set up a separate account and all that other stuff with Patreon, um, but in the long run, they actually give you more of the earnings than what YouTube would give you 
I think YouTube takes like 70% off. I think it's 70 or 60% off the top. It's crazy. Whereas uh, Patreon only takes 30%. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah. Yeah, everyone says, way to go, Tiger. Good job, buddy. All right. Well, I hope that answers that question. Good deal. Oh, thank you so much, uh, DJ Big Red 81 for posting that in the chat as well. So he's already posted a link, and I'm going to go ahead and pin that to the top here. So if you're looking at how to get into the HSS song contest, the monthly song contest, he's already uh, posted a link for that there. Good deal. Um, Her Lefe has a song, has a song, has a question about side chaining. So I have done videos that are more uh, on the of the live videos that we do, where I actually showcase the side chaining. So it's it's not like any one video in particular, um, but I do have one where I talk about side chaining a choir to a vocal and that's done in the mixing vocals video that actually shows up after these live streams so if you want to go and check that out that is definitely there um, and then the the concept that's in that video though it works for anything so uh, whether it's let me see if I can find that real quick Uh, but uh, but, uh. Let's see, it's in the Cakewalk by Band Lab tutorial folder. I thought it was called Mixing Vocals, but I think it's actually under something else. So forgive me if I lead you astray in that sense. I thought it was called Hmm. Okay, so there's the one on the automation. There's a live mixing session. Well, I know it's on there. Okay, I might have to get back to you on that, so I, I give you the link to the right video. Um, but essentially what a sidechain does, if you're, if you're wondering, is it just literally tells a plugin only to work during a specific frequency. So if, uh, say for instance, you have, which one of the major things that it's used for, is if you have a kick that's not being heard well, over um, the bass guitar, you can then side chain the bass guitar to the kick. And what that does is it causes that every time that bass guitar comes in, or every time the kick comes in, rather, it turns the bass guitar down just a bit to allow that kick to come through for a second and then it backs off again. So essentially, a side chain is just like putting someone on a fader to turn something down really quickly in context with whatever you've side chained it to. Do you think my song is ready to release or does it need some more work to do? Um, it's kind of, that's kind of a subjective question because it's really based off of what you think. Um, as far as I would have to actually see the project, I think in my DAW versus listening to it in an MP3 form, I wouldn't be able to, to make that judgment call for you. It does sound, it sounds really good. Um, do I think that it's ready to release now in my own personal opinion? Sure. Um, but that really has to be up to you. You have to make that decision. Okay. How do I go about suggesting an interview? Please, Rob. Yeah, go for it. Suggest a way. If there's somebody that you would like for me to interview, um, just hit me up in an email or something and let me know, and I'll try to reach out to them and see if I can't bring them on the show. It's That's not an issue at all. 
Um, I just found your channel and I want to express how much I appreciate your courses. I'm 20 years old and I'm a vocalist and recently I started songwriting and producing. You're like a gem. Oh, well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you, DJ, but I can't afford anything yet. I do mixing with stock plugins. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Tiger, I believe you mentioned that you were mixing in Cakewalk. If that's the case, um, let me let me turn you on to a plugin that will help you with your DSing. So there is a VX64 vocal strip that is available. You may have to find it in your, uh, what's that called? Uh, da, 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 plugin manager, yes. Now inside your plugin manager, there's this little option right here that a lot of people overlook where it says show excluded. Nine times out of 10, that bad boy is hiding around in there somewhere. As you can see, it's right here. The VX64 vocal strip is there, but it's hidden. So you need to go to show excluded and then add that into your plugin list that you're creating. But you'll see that on this, it does have a DSer built in right here. And the beauty of this is you can actually click on this button right here and it will go to listen. So you'll actually be able to hear only what it's DSing. And then you can set its routing here. I usually like to, I need to start setting it at the, it's by default, it's at the beginning. You can set it at the end, the middle, whatever. It's good to have it at the beginning because then you can, oops, I got it set to record up here because then you can DS it on the way into whatever uh, extra effects that you're going, but it can also be more beneficial to have it at the end if you're doing some EQ work and stuff like that. So glitch machines plugin. I've seen it. I've played around with it for a little bit, but I've not really, it's not really my cup of tea because it, it doesn't, um, the kind of music that I create and a lot of times the kind of music even that I mix doesn't require, uh, that sound, but it definitely does have its, its purposes. So all right, so Kamal says, I have a question, please. Do you arrange the music first or do you finish the song lyrically first? That's a really good question. It's one that I believe uh, is subjective in the sense that everybody has a different way that they do things. Um, I personally like to start with uh, my arrangements with, um, usually it'll start with me just sitting down and playing my guitar and I'll come up with a melody and then I'll come up with some of the lyrics Sometimes I don't even have all the lyrics completely finished before the song is done. And so once I got sort of the arrangement down in my head, as far as verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, however I want to do that, um, then I will then move from there and say, okay, I'm going to start laying the foundation, which is usually, um, okay, here's my drums. What BPM is it at? What, what does it feel comfortable to play to? Then I move on to my bass, and then I start building off of that. Sometimes it's not until I have the entire song even completed that I then get into that sphere of saying, okay, now I'm going to finish the lyrics. In fact, with the, the song I most recently released, uh, the best days of my life, the one that I wrote for my wife for our anniversary, our 15 year anniversary, it was just like that. I had the entire song completed and then I basically made the words up as the, the completed song was there so I could kind of see where it needed to go. It's a great question though. Sometimes a beat gives you motivation to write down and sometimes you write first and make music for the lyrics. Yeah, it, it can be different too. I mean, he, although there is, there is a lot to be said about having a, in fact, I just, I spoke with the mixed rocket fuel mixing bundle members about this. There's a lot that can be said about having a defined way that you do things all the time because we're creative and music really can't be put into a box. Sometimes it doesn't hurt either to think outside of that box and to literally like let the music take shape of its own. So your knowledge of cakewalk trial and error or reading the manual or a bit of both. So a lot of it was trial and error. Uh, and then a lot of it was um, just getting in there and using it all the time. I mean, all the time. And then if I had a question about something about, well, how does this work or how do I get this to happen? Then that's whenever I would whip out the manual and see, does this even exist? Is this something I can even do? And when I found out, you know, if it didn't exist, then I hop onto the forum and I start asking questions. Does this exist? Uh, if you did not know that there was a cakewalk forum, uh, that's definitely a great place where you can go and ask those questions. Awesome. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to conclude today's show. I hope you enjoyed the interview that we had with earlier with Gary Thompson. Uh, Gary, like I said, met we met through the Wisdom app. Uh, if you did not know that I'm on Wisdom or you didn't even know about Wisdom, uh, basically this is an app where you can just sort of sit down and flesh out ideas live and then individuals can hop on live as well and you can have discourse and talk back and forth in one another. Um, it's so cool too because... Uh, when I, I ran into Gary on this app, he was talking about things that it's <laughs> mop. He was talking about things that really resonated with me. And so I was able to actually jump on in the middle of his talk. He was able to have me on as a guest right there. We talked about the situation. It gives you like, I think like 10 minutes for you to talk. And, uh, then he just, he moved on but it was, it's such a cool app too, because it's like, I wish I'm, I'm actually working with the, uh, the developers right now to try to get the audio up to speed because I think it would really appeal to, to individuals a lot more um, if the audio was more up to speed. But uh, with that being said, uh, it's it's still in its infancy stage as well. Um, but if you want to check me out on there, uh, let me see if there's a way where I can actually go. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, here you go. So this is... Uh, the wisdom app you'll find me on there under home studio simplified imagine that um but essentially there's all kinds of people on there all the time giving live talks and and you basically can filter it by what you want to hear and by you know your interest but it's super cool it's kind of like a podcast that's always going on all the time live really cool all right how many concurrent plugins do you usually use? So every mix is different, um, but for the most part, I would say maybe 20, 25. And that's over the entire mix. That's over, and it also depends on how many tracks are involved. But when you get into the space of using buses and sends versus placing those on individual tracks, you're gonna save yourself a ton of CPU usage and you won't use as many plugins. So, great question, though. Mob says, I grew up way fast, considering yesterday I was a 14-year-old boy. <laughs> uh, da -da -da -da. Tiger says, please start a competition for song submission. Completely own of the subscriber and winner will get a chance to show their mix on the channel. So, yeah, that's that's exactly what we do. So during our song competitions, you submit a song um, and then we all listen to those songs, those submissions together. Everyone in the chat, myself included, we give some professional feedback on what we hear in that mix, what maybe could improve it, not just in the mix sometimes, but even, you know, arrangement wise, like someone might in the chat be like, wow, I hear a, a string section here that could come in that's not there. And it might give you that creative spurt to go, wow, OK, I need to that would be cool. You're right. So it's, it's all about that creativity aspect of helping one another. Um, and then the winner, whoever gets chosen, they get a free mix and master that I then do live on another live stream, a separate day, that then everybody can benefit from because then they see what would be my creative process to get that from you know point A to point B where it's ready to release. So very cool. LeVar Visions, thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. So Tiger, if you did not know, we already do have monthly song contests that are going on. In fact, it's pinned in the chat right now if you want to go and enter. Very cool. All right, so before we go, guys, you know what time it is. It's time to spin the wheel of awesomeness. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You know what time it is. And this is usually where I try to talk like Casey Kasem, a guy that most of you may not even know who he is. But if you didn't, now you're going to look him up. And you're going to wonder, why is Robert trying to sound like this old guy from the 50s? Because his voice was cool. <laughs> and because I'm crazy. Slightly. So, yeah. But this is the time of the show where we will spin the wheel of awesomeness. We have to do it at least once before we end the show, right? I mean, it's, it's sort of like a ritual around here. So we spin the wheel. Whatever the wheel lands on, that's what we'll do. Why? Not because it helps you creatively at all, but because it's fun. And half of us are still kids. We're still kids at heart anyway. So let's go ahead and spin that wheel. Let's make it happen, Casey. 
All right, and it landed on trivia. Ooh, this is a good one, especially with all of the uh, the stuff that's going on right now. Let me pull up a little piece of trivia here for you. So I'm this trivia will be based off of uh, music, obviously. So let's see here. But uh, but uh, what pop star wrote songs for Ariana Grande? Miley Cyrus, Britney Spears, and even Alice Cooper. Okay. I'm going to post that in the chat right now so you guys will... What pop star wrote songs for Ariana Grande, Miley Cyrus, Britney Spears, and even Alice Cooper? And everybody's Googling right now. <laughs> yes, he was the voice of Shaggy. Awesome. Awesome. Tiger, thank you so much for noticing, man. Uh, we will not be having any live celebrations for 15,000. We're going to wait until we get to 25 this time. When we reach 25,000, we're going to have another huge giveaway, and much like we did last time. So, Great question, though. DJ Big Red 81 has the correct answer. Whether he Googled it or not, no one really knows. But yes, Keisha was the correct answer. Isn't that crazy? Wrote songs for Alice Cooper. So it just goes to show you if you're creative, you can you can uh, you can find ways to monetize yourself and get out there regardless of what genre you're in. So yeah. Keisha was the correct answer. Herky Acuff. All right guys, well thank you so much for hopping on the show today and for being a part of the show. As usual, you all rock. Love each and every one of you. Um, I'm going to be posting this, um, if you weren't able to be here, I'm going to be posting the uh, interview that we just had with Gary Thompson, who I found on the Wisdom app uh, on the podcast. If you did not know that the podcast even exists, go and check that same link out that you will go and enter the song contest. You're going to see a bunch of different links there. Scroll down and you'll see HSS podcast. There's over 67, I believe, episodes that you can go back and listen to. And much like we talked about today, I started without... A lot of knowledge about how to do a podcast so if you go back and listen to episode one versus where we're at now today you're going to see a dramatic difference and just like anything and everything we get better over time so hopefully you'll like those okay so one last question before we go this is from kamal he says today i tried to produce funk i got discouraged when my drums were too basic what genre do you advise for intermediate producers to make whatever feels good to you Honestly, I know that seems like a cheesy answer, but whatever feels good to you. And I would even go as far as to say every once in a while, experiment with something that doesn't feel good to you. Experiment with something that is way outside of your wheelhouse. If you're a singer songwriter, try to write some funk. If you're predominantly jazz, try to write something metal. It's going to really get those creative juices flowing. So whatever feels good for you. Uh, and whatever you're you're going after, you know, do your best to study as many individuals as you can and, and learn from them. All right, guys. So we're going to give some shout outs real quickly before we go. These are individuals who has <laughs> recently subscribed to the channel. I'm laughing because Ops Get Smoked Like Jay Blunt, Smoked Jay Like Blunts is our newest subscriber. <laughs> These are individuals who have recently subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much for all of our subscribers, our Patreon members. You guys are awesome. Love each and every one of you. These are the chart toppers. I have to actually add some more to this chart uh, because of everything that's been happening over here at the, the last few weeks. We've gotten more than I can even add to the chart right now. Um, so thank you all so much. Uh, it's a good, good problem to have, right? So the more that we can garner, the more that we can begin to produce in this monthly revenue stream, the more giveaways that I can have and the more things that I can do for us here in the community. So thank you all so much for seeing the value and the time that we're spending here together. Love each and every one of you. So until next time, remember, you know what I'm going to say. You already know what I'm going to say. We can dream alone. We can create alone. But together, we can achieve so much more. God bless each and every one of you. Until next time, I will see you all on the next video. And it should be real soon, by the way. Bye-bye.